I just can't believe it. Another unbelievable breakthrough this past week. I am so excited right now. I'm, I'm basically shaking while I'm making this video. It is so exciting. Yes, initial results, but what if I told you the Earth's spin could power the future and that the Giza pyramids cracked it 4,500 years ago? I know it sounds crazy, and these are definitely initial predictions, but the experimental results seem really solid. This seems like it could be easily confirmed in the coming weeks, and there are amazing implications that we'll go through. So in March 2025, Princeton scientists pulled free electricity from our planet's rotation. No fuel needed. Today, we're diving into this breakthrough. It's insane potential and ramifications, and I'll speculate a wild theory that links directly to the recent pyramid scan alleged findings. Why are the pyramids so precisely aligned to true north, to true north, right? Not magnetic north. I'll argue those ancient pyramids might have been an ether-powered generator tapping the same cosmic trick that these Princeton scientists have stumbled upon. And by stumbled upon, I mean they did amazing science and research going back to 2016. So stick around. I think this changes everything. Chris Lado, welcome to Lado Files. Okay, so here's the bombshell report. Christopher Chaiba and his Princeton team in physical review research, March 2025, built a foot-long hollow cylinder out of manganese zinc ferrite. It's got high magnetic pull and low conductivity. They set it perpendicular to Earth's spin and magnetic field and bam, produced 17 to 18 microvolts, 25 nanoamperes of steady DC electricity. There's no moving parts, there's no fuel, just Earth spinning at 465 meters per second at the equator. At Giza, it's closer to 402 meters per second. So why is this nuts? Modern physics says it shouldn't work. Charges cancel out when everything rotates together, but Earth's magnetic field doesn't spin with the crust, right? It doesn't spin with the Earth. It's locked, right? It's tied to the core, static while we whirl so what's Earth pushing against to make this juice? Physics basically just shrugs. It says mass has inertia, end of story. It just stops there. They assume mass has inertia. They don't describe where inertia actually comes from. So Chaiba's ferrite catches that mismatch. Spin versus a still field, and it turns it into power. It's tiny, but real. So replication, he says, is what's needed. It will either prove or disprove this theory, but they tried it in two separate locations and skeptics, I'm guessing, will be sweating. So this is Christopher Chaiba and Kevin Han's first paper in July 2016, electric power generation from Earth's rotation through its own magnetic field. So they've been working on this for at least nine years. And this explains how it works. In this abstract from 2016, they say, we examine electric power generation from Earth's rotation through its own non-rotating magnetic field, that component of the field symmetric about Earth's rotation axis, right? Rotation axis, that'll be important for the pyramid's precision. There is a simple general proof that this is impossible, they say. However, we identify a loophole in that proof and show that voltage could be continuously generated in a low magnetic Reynolds number conductor rotating with Earth, provided magnetically permeable material were used to ensure sure curl with the conductor. So basically, since the Earth is magnetically permeable, it works. So the Earth is spinning while the magnetic field of the Earth stays static, right? What's it staying static in regards to? They continue, we solve the relevant equations for one laboratory realization and from this solution, predict voltage magnitude and sign dependence on system dimensions in orientation relative to Earth's rotation, right? To Earth's rotation, not its magnetic field. Although that, that is important. It needs to be perpendicular uh, to the Earth. But it also depends on the rotation of the Earth, the velocity vector. So now we fast forward to 2025, 19 March. I think this day could be very important in history. 
experimental demonstration of electric power generation from Earth's rotation through its own magnetic field. So this is the experimental demonstration. You have again, Christopher Chiba, Kevin Hand, and then Thomas Chiba. So for this abstract, Earth rotates through the asymmetric part of its own magnetic field. So the magnetic field's just sitting there. Earth's rotating, but a simple proof shows that this is impossible to use this to generate electricity in a conductor rotating with Earth. So physics says it's impossible, right? However, we previously identified implicit assumptions underlying this proof and showed theoretically that these could be violated and the proof circumvented. This requires using a soft magnetic material with the topology satisfying a particular mathematical condition and a composition and scale favoring magnetic diffusion, i.e. having a low magnetic Reynolds number, R sub M. Here, we realize these requirements with a cylindrical shell of manganese, zinc, ferrite. So that's your low Reynolds number material. Controlling for thermoelectric and other potentially confounding effects. So background noise is what all the skeptics are going to argue, right? They controlled for it. We showed that this small demonstration system generates a continuous DC voltage and current of the low predicted magnitude. We test and verify other predictions of the theory voltage and current peak when the cylindrical shell's long axis is orthogonal to both Earth's rotation velocity V, okay, so the velocity V, and the magnetic field. So how is this important? Well, if you have the pyramid, right, it's sticking out of the ground perpendicular to the magnetic field now, and you spin the Earth, right, just consider that, spin the Earth, the pyramid spinning, voltage and current go to zero when the entire apparatus, cylindrical shell together with current leads and multimeters is rotated 90 degrees to orient the shell parallel to V, the velocity. So current goes to zero as soon as you rotate that 90 degrees. So in essence, they would be able to determine the exact direction the earth is traveling based on this principle. Voltage and current again reach a maximum but of opposite sign when the apparatus is rotated a further 90 degrees. So as you keep spinning it, now the electricity spinning is going the other direction. You have opposite sign. An otherwise identical solid manganese zinc ferrite cylinder generates zero voltage at all orientations. So that is their control, right? Their placebo. And a high Reynolds number cylindrical shell produces zero voltage. So you need a low number Reynolds number. We also reproduced the effect at a second experimental location. The purpose of these experiments was to test the existence of the predicted effect. Ways in which this effect might be scaled to generate higher voltage and current may now be investigated. Unbelievable. Okay, if we go back to their 2016 paper, they have all the math in here. <laughs> it's complicated. I read through, tried to follow it. There's a lot in there. The last paragraph of the 2016 papers, just amazing. They basically start altogether different topologies and materials are possible. The effect predicted here would be available nearly globally and with no intermittency, but requires testing then further examination to see if it or some other configuration based on broadly similar principles could be scaled to practical emission-free power generation. Imagine that. Devices could have important practical implications even if only voltages of around one volt could be achieved. Such a device would represent a small application power supply whose lifetime would be limited only by material degradation. At the other extreme ends of speculation regarding generated power, we note that the global installed power generation capacity is projected to grow to 10.7 terawatts by 2040. Imagine as an upper limit that human civilization generated this power entirely from Earth's rotation through its magnetic field. Over a century, the resulting kinetic energy loss would increase Earth's rotation period by seven milliseconds. This may be compared to fluctuations in the length of Earth's day of 10 milliseconds over time intervals of several decades, and an observed long-term increase dominated by lunar tidal recession of 2.5 milliseconds per century. So what that means is you're effectively taking kinetic energy of the earth spinning and traveling around the sun, and you are converting that into electrical energy by putting a brake 
you're, it's essentially you're you're breaking in what I argue would be the ether is what you're breaking, which is the pull, which I've argued before in previous videos of everything else in the universe. Mox principle is what gives us our inertia is actually the attraction of all things to each other. And based on their calculations, we could effectively power all of Earth's energy requirements, all of humanity's power for a century or almost a century and slow the Earth's rotation by seven milliseconds. That's it. So we'd lose seven milliseconds over a century and be able to power cleanly all of our energy requirements. That is just unbelievable. And the last section of their 2025 paper talks about possible scaling to higher voltages. So re results for our simple laboratory demonstration systems appear strongly to confirm the effects predicted by equation 25, as do the proposed relevant control experiments. The results have been confirmed at a second location in the same geomagnetic environment. The next step would be for an independent group to reproduce or contradict our results under experimental conditions closely similar to those used here. If our results were corroborated, then the path would be open to investigate whether this effect could be scaled to produce useful electrical power. Even if only vol voltages far below those for residential power were achievable using our effect, such devices might still have practical applications as batteries that were, would require no fuel and could not wear out in the usual sense. In principle, the diameter of the system depicted in figure one could be miniaturized without decreasing the generated electromagnetic field. This would allow many such devices to be physically placed in parallel but connected in series, for example, in an orbiting satellite, amplifying the voltages generated. Whether scaling one of these examples or the configuration demonstrated here could lead to a practical device is a question for further investigation. So basically, scale it up. Earth's got 2.1 times 10 to the 29 joules of rotational energy, enough to power humanity forever, essentially. You stack these cylinders, billions in a device, you're lighting homes, cities, no oil, no windmills, tap into the spin, so it's free, it's passive, it's basically endless, right? Over centuries, you have seven milliseconds. So if we crack this, basically we're talking a new energy era. You're talking Tesla's Wardenclyffe Towers, right? Is essentially what I'm gonna argue here, the pyramid could have been. Not only that, I think this highlights a gaping huge hole in our current physics argument is that we just assume that mass has inertia. That's it. Physics assumes as an assumption, a given that mass has inertia. They don't say why, they don't say where it comes from. They just assume it and they say space time is there and mass bends space time. Why? Because mass has inertia. What is inertia? They don't say anything about it, right? So I think in this case, this could be a modern day Michelson Morley experiment where essentially what are we pushing against? What is the earth pushing against? What are we creating electricity from, right? What are we breaking against? It could be the pull of everything else. According to Mach's principle would be the ether. So this isn't just magnets, it's ether, the medium tying all mass. Earth spins, but the field's static because it's anchored to something, to the universe's pull. It's Mach's principle, it's not some local quirk. So inertia is Earth or any mass really resisting that pull, that cosmic tug. It's not a random mass thing. We can't just say that mass has inertia out of nowhere. Modern physics can't explain why. It doesn't say any reason for this. It just takes it as an assumption and says, you're dumb and we're smart. And that's what they're saying. They assume and move on. That's it. So this generator is proof, if it's confirmed, that we're missing the real frame. So energy's there. It's basically limitless. And it sounds like we are finally catching it. Unbelievable. So in the same month, March 2025, a new technique, SAR tomography from space, claimed that under Khafre's pyramid, that's the center pyramid in Giza, there's a two kilometer complex, five structures, eight 648 meter wells or columns, if you will, leading down to two 80 meter cubes. I was in the Great Pyramid in November along with several of the other pyramids, many of them, and not once did I get the impression it was a tomb. I felt like I was walking through a battleship, a giant machine. It felt like a giant generator is what it felt like. 
So what if the Egyptians were using this exact technology and they just scaled it 4,500 years ago? So if you picture it, this is imagine the same approximate device as the recent Princeton claims. You have those wells go down deep perpendicular to the magnetic field. It taps into Earth's spin against that static magnetic field, right? Which is essentially the ether frame. So the pyramid is basically a giant version of Princeton's trick, pulling cosmic juice, essentially, since at least 2580 BC. So how would this work? I've always been amazed that the pyramids are completely locked to true north, right? True north, not magnetic north. So if they were using magnets to align this, which you could imagine, I guess, different materials, they would align to magnetic north, but they were aligned to true north. True north is the exact point of the earth around which the earth is spinning. True north is the spin axis. It's set by the rest of the universe, right? Not magnetic north. Magnetic north was five to seven degrees off back then. So in this case, spin is the key. They can align directly to true north because they could tell that velocity vector, right? The current would go to zero as soon as they were off axis slightly. So 402 meters per second around the earth at Giza, pushing through the ether. The wells drop vertical, perpendicular to that spin and traveling exactly parallel to the earth's spin. So it cuts the field and the ether flow. You have quartz lined granite is vibrating or magnetite doped stone catches it. So what can we speculate? Again, a, a lot of this, most of it is speculation, right? But what can we speculate? What you're gonna see down in those cubes, what are they probably made of or could be made of if this is correct would be dolomite or gold even to store the energy, right? The pyramid shape is gonna focus it, limestone's an insulator, and then the very top was capped in gold. So that's the big speculation, right? Giza effectively could have lit a lost grid. If you consider Tesla's Wardenclyffe towers that you can transfer energy through the earth. So it's not just that. This, this finding could revolutionize all of our physics. Where does inertia actually come from? Asking that question, not just assuming it as a given. How are we able to generate electricity from the spin of the earth pushing against its own magnetic field? What is it actually pushing against? And I've been arguing this in my theory for several years now. So I argue redshifts that ether drag as well. The universe not expanding, light slowing in the medium. Cosmic microwave background can be blue shift from the ether echoes. You don't need a big bang. That means no dark matter, no dark energy. It's just cosmic mass driving it. Attraction, Mox principle again. You could look through all my universe videos if you're curious about this. So this would mean that the Egyptians knew this. Like how could they get so accurate to true north, right? Was it really just alignment with the stars? How could they get so accurate? But if they had a little detector right there or a giant generator and they could tell exactly the current would drop if you're off by any sort of degree at all, now they could align the pyramids to exactly what is needed to produce the maximum voltage. Princeton's a little tiny toy. If you imagine Giza was the real deal and we're just waking up to this fact, it's, oh, it's mind blowing, obviously speculation, but I think it's extremely exciting. Also mind blowing is what ChatGPT can create in these images, just banged out these images uh, through a new, new update. Just amazing, we're seeing mind blowing tech and i think it's showing the gaping holes in our current models right our current cosmological models our current models of the ancient world our current model of physics how can we generate energy this would be clean free energy across the entire planet essentially just so exciting amazing stuff um yeah, still just blown away. So thank you for watching. Please hit the like button, share this video if you did enjoy it. And then you can support my work at patreon.com forward slash Chris Lato. Definitely need the support at this time. <laughs> YouTube is not paying what it used to, but I'll be fine actually. I'll be fine. Come to Lato Files Discord. 
you want to continue the discussion and have a great rest of your day. Peace.